<laughs> we're going live well not really live sorry <laughs> hello 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 we are making white chocolate mousse and pairing it with the sparkling today oh my gosh so we were going to do a chocolate ganache and uh then kind of puts a little bit of math to that going like how's that actually going to work so not so much so um yes we're going to do a white chocolate mousse which is so delicious and um so i'll take you through what i've done I'm actually making triple the amount that I need right now. So I'm, I'm just going to give you the recipe for one as we go along here. This is triple because, well, it's Valentine's and there's a dinner party. <laughs> so anyway, in this here, I had uh, two egg yolks and um, a quarter cup of sugar. And I froth that up with a beater just until it got like really light in color. You can see how light it is. And then this guy is a quarter cup of cream, of heavy cream that I've just brought to a simmer. And so what I'm doing right now is tempering the eggs. If you added the, the cold eggs to the warm cream, it would actually scramble them. And we don't want, we don't want scrambled eggs. No. That's just wrong. No. <laughs> so it's about slowly bringing the temperature of the eggs up to, uh, up to the same temperature that the, the cream is. And so it's called tempering the eggs. So just do it nice and slow. I brought all the cream over into the eggs. It looks nice and smooth. And now we're going to go back into the pot and put that over some heat and get the eggs just to cook slightly, just to the point where it covers the back of a spoon. So anyway, let's get that far first. Get this going. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. We have a roadblock here for the cameraman. Rob is the cameraman today, the uh, fiance. And uh, we have the, uh, the roadblock in the way here of the Bernese mountain dog saying, no, Rob, you don't get to get close to Sue Ann <laughs> until Valentine's Day. So, um, hope everyone's doing good. So what we're going to here now, we have the heat on the, on the cream mixture. So we have the eggs. Yeah, so two eggs, uh, some cream. I'm going to turn that down. That looks a little bit fast how it's cooking. We don't want to scramble these. So we'll just have to start all over again. That's where the good thing is, I guess, by doing this not live. <laughs> <laughs> we mess up. Hit pause. The fourth time we've done this. <laughs> this is shot one. It's one of those days where, so we have too many people coming in this afternoon, hence why we're pre-recording this. It's kind of exciting that it feels like the lights are turning on a little bit and that uh, people are actually going out and doing things again. Yay. And um, so I'm just not sure exactly how much farther to go with this. I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to go a little farther because we don't want this to cook too much to the point where the eggs are, are cooked. Um, like it's just about getting to the point where it coats the back of a spoon. We're not quite there yet. Mind you, I'm doing triple. If you're doing just one set of this recipe, that may have already happened. But since I'm doing three times the amount, I need, I need 10 portions for tonight. And I need uh, two for us to eat now. One for you, darling, and one for me. <laughs> Oh yes, that's right, but we're dieting for our wedding. That's right, so we'll figure that part out later. <laughs> so, oh, you know what? It's going just a little bit too fast. I see it's kind of pooling at the bottom of the spoon, which means it's, it's cooking a little bit stronger on the bottom. I think someone that was more clever would probably maybe even do this in a double boiler where you have a little bit better control over the, over the heat. I'm probably pushing it a little bit here trying to do this, so. All right, we're just about, so if it's, so if it's cooking on the bottom, we know we're there. Let me just go a little bit longer here, just to make sure we've got the heat. And then we don't want any lumps or chunks of it. So um, I think if we don't get this too cooked now, it might be a little bit too uh, juicy by the time it gets to the uh, by the time it gets to the uh, the, um, the mousse stage. So okay, pretty good. I think so too, eh? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's uh, All right. let's pull it. So we're going to just put it turn the heat off here. Safety third. <laughs> just put it through a sieve to get any of the pieces that may have cooked too much. Uh, thank you, Bricks, but you don't have a lot to say here. Yeah, see, you see you got a little bit um, hot on the bottom, so that is what we're straining out, is like that little bit that got overcooked is on the bottom. <laughs> Sound effects provided by Bricks staff, Bricks Bravo. And... <laughs> I have a plan. Brixie, guess what? In four seconds. Oh yeah. See, we don't want that in our mousse. We want it to be nice and smooth and silky. Thank you. Guess what? Where's Piggy? Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Come on. Let's go. Okay. Two seconds here. What's this? Who's this? Distraction. Play with that. Okay. Good. Good job. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have our warm egg mixture here. So now it's about folding and getting this white chocolate uh, chilled as well. So 
they say all of this will melt all of that. So let's just see how that, how that works out. I'm going to guess that I probably should have put some of that chocolate into the egg mixture first. Oh no, she's going to, she's going to go. There's enough heat there to bring this. Oh no, I think this is perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like it's melting. It does look like it's melting. White chocolate melts so easily. So this is just like Baker's white chocolate. And um, what I did with it is I spent a lot of time <laughs> taking my time and, um, and chopping it into really fine pieces so it melts really nicely. So, and it really is, it's holy moly, this is uh, melting down nice. And I guess having enough heat in there too. I have to be honest, I probably used a little bit more white chocolate than I should have. And uh, just because, well, that's the way I roll. <laughs> Make sure it's nice and white and chocolatey. Whoo, this has been a workout. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to fold uh, some of the uh, whipped cream into this. But I don't wanna do that until this is absolutely melted down because once I take that cold whipped cream and put it in this, I'm gonna have lost all my heat to melt the, uh, melt the white chocolate. So, and you see how I'm kind of like doing it like this as well, because the egg yolks were, uh, were whipped beforehand. So you want to keep as much air in it as, as humanly possible all the way through. Whew. Maybe the jacket wasn't such a good idea today. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was weird that being so, uh, so warm out too, eh? <laughs> Which is a nice change after all that, uh, after all that cold. Right. Yeah, it's looking pretty, pretty close. At the same time, we've lost a lot of heat. So I could have got a little bit finer with the white chocolate. I know some people, they, uh, they may do this. I mean, I could put this back over the heat, but then I run the risk of cooking the eggs again. And I already, you know, um, I don't want to get them into that. Oh, we're, we're close. We're close. We're close. I'm glad I'm doing this in this bowl because <laughs> it's so light and I can really move it around. Well, is there a little bit of egg white chunks in a white mousse really that bad of a thing? No. No. Okay. All right. So we could be close there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. I think we're far enough along there. So now what we want to do is slowly lighten this up. So we're going to take a little bit of this, just about half of it to start off with. Let's go with half. And we're going to fold that in. So we're going in through the middle and over top. In through the middle and over top. Like you're kind of like pulling the air and incorporating air into it to lighten it up. Oh, yeah. Did I mention that I love chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> I was once at a, a, a commercial put together by, uh, by the wine council, and uh, I was the lead person, and they're like, tell us something that goes great with uh, red wine, Sue Ann. I'm like, oh, chocolate, like, come on. <laughs> so, oh, that is lightening up so much. Okay, um, so again, I don't know if it really matters which order I go to here. I think it's more about, I think just, this, because this bowl is bigger, I'm gonna go like this and put it in here. Oh my yumminess. All right, so now let's just fold in the rest of that whipped cream. Let's go nice and low, nice and slow here. And just going down and up through the bottom, down and up just to, uh, cause if you stir it or use a whisk, you're gonna take all the air out of the whipped cream and then that would just be very sad because it took all that energy to uh, make the whipped cream. So once, uh, so, so at this point too, you should already figured out what you want to serve this in. I am going to do this in martini glasses and um, we'll be garnishing it with uh, some um, uh, raspberries. But for tonight's version, I'm going to uh, make a, a passion fruit gel to go on top of it somehow. I haven't quite figured out how that's going to work quite yet. That's why we're not doing that part on camera. <laughs> so, okay, nicely incorporated in. Now you can transfer this to a piping bag and pipe it into your, uh, into your vessel, but I am going to just go just like this. Mm. Oh my. Yum. So if this is 12 portions. That looks like it. They can go a little higher with that. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then into the fridge for at least an hour, but you could do it probably about four or five hours ahead of time. And then by the time you go to, to serve it, of course you want to put a little something on top, maybe a little piece of mint. Oh, some dark chocolate, like with a, um, uh, with a, um, you know, the, with your vegetable peeler to get some like nice chocolate curls on top of that. 
but we're gonna serve that now. <laughs> oh yeah, there's some wine to go with this. And we have customers that are just arriving, how exciting. Timing is perfect. Uh, we're going to do this with the fancy farm girl flirty bubbles. So this is uh, one of the new ones, perfect for Valentine's Day. Good pour there, Sue Ann. Um, look how much energy and uh, how much um, bebes, bebesity that wine has. And uh, we can put a little bit more in that glass because, uh, you know, we didn't have a mimosa this morning for breakfast, so I need a little more sparkling. <laughs> Um, so, tell us about the wine. Yeah, I should tell you about the wine. <laughs> uh, so this is a Vidal that was, uh, that was fermented two times. So one time in the tank to make the base wine, and then fermented again in a second tank where the carbon dioxide could not escape. And that time, so it's called Method Charmat, where you ferment it the second time in, in tank. So um, some beautiful bubbles. And so you can usually tell the difference between the two different types of fermentation by the size of the, of the carbon dioxide bubbles. And because um, usually the method chef and wah, where it's fermented in the in the um, in the bottle, it uh, is really really fine, tiny tiny bubbles. And method charmat is a little bit bigger. However, so I'm kind of amazed at how beautiful the t and tiny the bubbles are on this one, given that it's method charmat. So it is right. So I said it's Vidal, but Suan is pink, and Vidal is a white wine. So yes, indeed, it has um, uh, it has a seven percent. Uh, Cabernet Franc added to it, or 5% Cabernet Franc added to it just before bottling. And um, let's have a little sip. Mm -hmm. Dry, fresh, crisp, little strawberry notes to it. So customers are coming, let's let them in. Hello, come on in, come on in. I just finally, I'm just finishing a filming, come on in, two seconds here. And uh, so it's dry, it's fresh, it's crisp, it has a little bit of a of a strawberry note to it, quite beautiful. And then, um, yeah, with the white chocolate mousse. Oh, so imagine that chilled a little bit more. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Rich, creamy, really lovely on the palate. And then with the wine. Mm. The acidity, really cuts through the fats and oils, cleanses the palate. This is so light and fluffy. This is, has a lightness to it as well. That really lines up nicely. There's a, a opulence to this that's just off the chart. So, anyway, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. This one is um, this wine is a uh, uh, twenty six ninety five a bottle. Available here only at the winery or online. Hopefully, you'll see it in the LCBO someday soon. We're working on that for you. And um, but I hope you have a great Valentine's Day. Enjoy. Give your loved one an extra special hug and cuddle. And uh, we'll see you on the flip side of it. Have a good one. See ya. Ciao.